Hey Logo Designers, this is Michael from the Logo Package, and today I'm going to be showing you all of the ins and outs of Logo Package Forge. Logo Package Forge is an extension that allows you to test logo fonts, lockups, and layouts much quicker than doing it the old manual copy and paste way we're so used to. So let's take a look. When you open Logo Package Forge, the first page that you will see is the logo type page. And here we can organize our fonts into groups and we can also enter in settings for generating logo types. The left sidebar of the extension is where we can create and organize our font sets. There are three default font sets that are always available in Logo Package Forge. All fonts is the list of all of the fonts that you have installed on your computer. If you favorite any of these fonts by clicking the star icon, they will appear in the favorite set, which is a place where you can get easy access to all of your favorite fonts. And lastly, there is the hidden set, which is where all of the fonts you don't want to see in the extension are placed. If you ever want to bring a font back from the hidden set, all you have to do is click the icon on the font and it will reappear in the all fonts list. Beneath the default sets are the user created sets. You can see that I have a tech set here where I have placed three fonts that I like to use for tech projects. Let's create a new set by clicking the new set button. I'm going to call this set fashion and I'm going to use it to hold fonts that I like to use for fashion projects. So let's get some fonts into this fashion set. First, I will go to the all fonts set and I'll use the search to find fonts that I want to add to the set. And the first font that I actually want to add is April Fatface. So I'm just going to drag that font into the fashion set. I have some other specific fonts in mind, so I'm simply going to use the search field to search for them. The first font I want is Lustria. So I will search for it and drag it into the fashion set. I would also like to add Optima to the set. So I will drag that in as well. Now in my fashion set, I have the three fonts that I have selected. The ability to organize our fonts inside of Adobe Illustrator is a very powerful feature on its own, but we can take this up to the next level by using the logo type settings at the top of the page. I want to generate logo types for a project called Oliver Chang. So I will enter Oliver Chang into our type line and click make logos. Hey, logo designers. The Clicking make logos has taken the type that we have in our type line and the set that we have selected and put that type in every font from the set. These are editable type layers, so we can go in and make changes if we want to later. We can add as many type lines as we want. So I'm going to add another type line and I'm actually going to put Chang on the second type line. Now that we have multiple type lines, we can choose an alignment. So I will go to the alignment settings and choose left align and click make logos. Now we see what our type looks like on two lines with a left alignment. We can choose center align and right align as well. To show off the justify alignment, I'm going to change things up again. Let's make Oliver Chang one line again. And let's make our second line a tagline for this company. Since Oliver Chang is a fashion company that makes handbags, let's use the tagline custom handbags and let's have it be all caps. Additionally, we can change any of these type lines to be any color that we want. So for the tagline, I will go to the color icon, click it, and I'm going to choose a dark red. Okay, now let's change the alignment to justified and click make logos. Choosing the justified alignment has made all of the type lines the exact same width. You may have noticed that all of these generations have all of the types set in the same font, but we can actually use Logo Package Forge to pair fonts as well. I'm liking the way that Oliver Chang looks like in our Lustria font, but we could look at some fonts that are more modern, like the fonts that I have in my tech set. We can compare Lustria to the fonts in the tech set by clicking the target icon next to Oliver Chang. This has opened up some new options for us in the extension. We can choose a target font and we can choose a partner set. The target font is going to be a single font that all of our generations are going to have for the targeted line. So Oliver Chang is the targeted line and the target font that I want is Lustria. Now I can choose a partner set. This is the set where all of the fonts will be paired with the target font that we have selected. So for the partner set, I want tech. 
This means that every logo variation will have Lustria Regular as the Oliver Chang font, and then all of the variations will be the different fonts from the text set for the tagline. Let's click Make Logos. And now we can see we have Oliver Chang in Lustria, and we get to see all of the different typeface variations for the tagline. Let me show you another scenario where we might want to use font pairing. I'm going to change the content of these type lines and move Chang into our second line. And I'm going to change the stacking setting from vertical, which puts lines one on top of another, to horizontal, which puts type lines next to each other. I'm going to change the gap setting from zero to 10 so that there will be a little bit of gap between the two type lines. And I want to add just a little bit of tracking. I'd also like to see this logo type with all caps. So I'm going to change these lines to Oliver Chang in all caps. Now with our targeting options the same, Oliver will always show up as Lustria Regular and Chang will be set in all of the different fonts from the text set. Let's make logos. Indeed, that is what we get. Oliver is always Lustria Regular, but we have paired that font with all of the fonts from the text set. We've already found some pretty promising directions for our logo type, but this wouldn't really be a logo exploration without including some logo marks. Let's clean up our type settings and then see how Logo Package Forge allows us to test logo marks as well. I preferred having Oliver Chang on one line and in the same font. So I'm going to set Oliver Chang in our single type line. And now I can choose a logo mark. I have another document where I have a couple of different variations for logo marks for this logo concept. I'm going to choose this first option on the left and I'm going to go to the logo mark tab where I can set a logo mark by clicking the set mark button. A dedicated artboard is created in the grid document that contains our logo mark artwork. Next to our thumbnail of the logo mark artwork that was set are some alignment options for the logo. The T in the center of this area represents the position of the type and all of the squares are positions where we can anchor the logo mark. I can do top left, top center, top right, or bottom left, bottom center, and bottom right. If I change the stacking from vertical to horizontal, then I have the same options, but for the left of the type and the right of the type. For this logo mark, I'd like to see what it looks like vertically stacked, and I want it aligned to the center of the type. I will go to my scale settings, and I'm going to choose 100%. 100% will make the logo mark 100% of the width of the logo type. And for the gap setting, I don't need too much gap, so I'm just going to set 15%. Let's make logos. We have a new column in the grid document, which contains all of our fonts paired with a logo mark. This looks all right, but I would like to try a different logo mark and a different alignment. So I'm going to click the X in the logo mark preview, which will remove the logo mark from our grid document and allow us to set a new mark. I'll go back to our marks document and choose the mark on the far right. I'll click set mark again, and you can see that our logo mark artboard is back and it has the new logo mark artwork inside of it. This time I would like to change the stacking to horizontal, and I'm going to put the logo on the left. I don't need it to be 100%, that's far too big. I'm going to use 30% as my setting, and I think I still like 15 as the gap. So let's make logos. This new alignment looks really nice, and I think it's one of the directions I'm going to pursue for this logo. Using Logo Package Forge for this project has allowed me to avoid the endless font scrolling in Adobe Illustrator's font list to find fonts that I wanted to try, and it's also allowed me to test those fonts in different layouts and locked up with different logo mark concepts. All of these tests are presented in a neat orderly grid where it's easy to identify my favorite concepts and it all happened much quicker than if I had to copy and paste these variations and make tweaks manually. That's the power of Logo Package Forge. Thanks for watching.